Hello, everyone. I'm Julia. I manage partner marketing at Neo4j, and I am pleased to welcome Robert Allison. He is a director of product at Kinevis. Robert has a strong background in software development, engineering, and architecture, which makes it a perfect crossover between art and technology. I'm very excited about hearing from him today, and welcome, Robert. Hello. So, Robert, I have a few questions for you. Um, I know that Kinevis is in the business of uh, providing graph analytics, and why do business users need graph analytics? Uh, sure. So, um, business users, um, they're, they, they're, they're in the business, if you like, of uh, sort of gathering and analyzing data um, in order to make uh, good business decisions and, and to support those decisions uh, with the data. So, um, the, the, uh, gra the graph um, and the graph analytics and graph visualizations can help, help with that process uh, and give them the support they, they need to uh, not only uh, to make the decisions, not only to sort of gain the insights into the data, uh, but also then to support those decisions to the um, to other stakeholders in in the business, in their business, uh, and clients, and so forth. Mm, interesting. Are there any obstacles that hold uh, users back? So, um, as as things stand in the sort of technological environment that we have um, today, which is is still very new, really. So a lot of the tools that business users would need to use or would like to use in order to support their decision making are still in their infancy and are still sort of very technological because of course they're technological tools. So they, they've grown out of uh, scientists and, and technologists who have been uh, working with data at the, uh, at the technical level more. So, um, so they don't. So it, it, the tools are still in, in their infancy um, and. Uh, they they are perhaps not as user friendly uh, to non technical people, so this this is a big challenge um, at, at the moment. Um, and so, for example, uh, queries. Uh, you have a database, and and you can query the database with SQL, and SQL is a very very powerful tool, and it can tell you many things. But in order to use SQL properly, you need to have a reasonably good technical insight into SQL. Uh, and indeed the database systems you might be using. And as we move uh, beyond SQL into sort of um, no SQL systems and sort of uh, AI type systems and all more complex uh, information gathering and producing and management systems, these tools and interfaces themselves are, are again more complex. So uh, that, that's probably the, that, that's what's, um, it causes a lot of headaches for business users uh, when they're trying to, to, to use these um, technologies. Well, what does the graph enablement look like? So, um, it, it, it's about uh, assembling data from different sources. And the great thing about the graph is that it's sufficiently general uh, to support relational databases, to support um, uh, data from social media as uh, sort of uh, input um, uh, and the, the, these, these kinds of things. So um, it, it can serve as a sort of uh, overall uh, one data structure to rule them, if you like. But at the same time, it's actually very intuitive um, and it corresponds uh, quite closely to uh, the way we understand the world around us. So you don't need a, a sort of deep technical um, knowledge or, or um, uh, or background or training to 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 get the most out of uh, a graph um, representation of your data. And I understand that you have a product graph XR. So how can the product support business users? Right. Yes. Um, graph XR. So uh, we uh, uh, the, the 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 product can uh, talk to your the data sources that you have already. So it can talk to your SQL databases. Uh, it can talk to your social media as um, uh, information sources. Um, and it can assemble these various uh, data streams, as various data sources, uh, into sort of one coherent whole. Um, and, and I mean, this includes um, enrichment from um, uh, other, other data sources. 
Um, it may be including existing data that you have that you can just put in there. Um, and it allows you to visualize it and filter it um, uh, in, in a way that means that you can sort through your data. So it's kind of, um, there's, there's a bit of a, a process that goes on. Um, when you have all this data um, that is available to you, the first thing you need to do is a bit of discovery, really, um, and to see what data you have, um, what does it mean, um, how clean is the data. A lot of data is a bit messy and it needs to be cleaned up and, and these kinds of things. So GraphXR can help you with that um, by immediately showing, visualizing how your data sort of connects together. And um, again, in this intuitive sort of three-dimensional graph uh, representation. Um, GraphXR is three-dimensional, uh, and this gives an advantage over a two-dimensional representation in that more complicated relationships can be um, expressed and um, mapped and, and visualized. Um, and, and because of the sort of uh, the physics engine that's behind the uh, force layout of GraphXR, uh, sort of untangles your data for you, if you like. Um, so it will uh, associate um, common pieces, to data, pieces of data um, in a more connected way. Uh, to take an example, uh, social media data, uh, which relates people's um, connections through work and college. Um, if you have a large amount of data and you can make these connections, uh, then people who um, are a, very connected will, of course, immediately stand out, but also clumps of connections. So maybe surrounding a school or a college or a workplace, you can easily see uh, which uh, sort of societies, if you like, uh, exist within your um, uh, social media data. And now that's very easy to do with GraphXR. It's just as simple as soon as you just bring the data in from SQL, from CSV, or from other sources, immediately these sorts of connections jump out at you. So that's discovery. Um, and then, but then you can work more with your data. So uh, if you need to uh, highlight or emphasize uh, particular insights that you've gained through your discovery process, you can use GraphXR to filter out uh, things that are not of interest, um, to do transformations, so perhaps aggregation transformations where uh, you may collapse some nodes into and just represent it as a value, um, or even tease out some of the values that you've seen in your data and build new relationships that um, weren't necessarily present in your original data, but um, you, you've, you can see and you can then uh, promote and bring to the foreground. And, and, then, and then finally, a graphics R will help you visualize this in, in a way that helps with your reporting. So that when you do want to present your insights um, to other stakeholders, uh, then GraphXR makes this easy for you to do. Mm, fascinating. Well, uh, thank you very much for sharing this with our audience. And we are looking forward to following Kinevis and our audience can check out more at kinevitz.com. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Julia.